Welcome back to the show and thanks for staying with us. We're at the KDA office in Manhattan. We're joined by Susan Mesker, who's the new assistant uh, secretary of agriculture for the state of Kansas. Susan, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Brian. We've had you on the show before when we first started about a year ago and uh, you've moved to Manhattan. First of all, congratulations on the new job. Thank you. Thank you. It's an easy transition to come from the water office here to the Department of Ag. Uh, speaking of water, you recently traveled to Washington and spent some time in Washington and, and gave some testimony on the waters of the U.S. Uh, tell us a little bit about that trip. Sure. So this was a great opportunity, uh, not only for Kansas, but for all of the Midwest states to be able to uh, appear in front of the Senate Ag Committee, uh, hosted by our local Senator Roberts, and share some information about the impacts of the proposed EPA rulemaking of Waters of the U.S. on Kansas, and specifically on Kansas agriculture. Well, one of the things I know you brought up was is a lack of communication between the EPA and the Corps of Engineers with local and state governments. Absolutely, that was one of our key tenants in our testimony. Uh, throughout the rulemaking process, uh, the state of Kansas, through the governor's office, and all of the cabinet agencies had the oppor opportunity to submit a letter of comment to the EPA and uh, Army Corps of Engineers, but that's all we were given the opportunity to do, is basically participate in the same way that any stakeholder would in the process. And we really believe that the states as the primary implementers of water policy in the state really needed to have a more significant role in providing feedback and input on the rulemaking. And what basically came out of that is the EPA and the Corps of Engineers basically have to go back to the starting point. Is that correct, the way I read the rule? Where we are now, that would certainly be an ideal outcome uh, from, this, from our perspective of that hearing. The outcome of the hearing is that there was a bipartisan introduction of some legislation just last week um, it was hosted uh, by Senator Roberts and Senator Inhofe in Oklahoma that basically would direct the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers to step back to reinitiate the outreach, uh, more appropriately engaging the states on developing the rule, and then also really clearly outline some of the waters that they felt should be excluded mm -hmm. from the definition of jurisdiction. And one of the things that I, I think I would imagine Kansas is taking away from is, hey, we're already putting things in place to monitor our own water and, and manage our own water, and that's, I'm sure, extremely important for the other states as well. Absolutely. We have a really robust program in Kansas that's uh, led through the Kansas Department of Health and Environment, but with, is really stakeholder driven as far as implementing practices on the ground that improve our water quality. And we felt that the implementation of this proposed EPA rule actually would be a step back in improving water quality in the state. We'd have more producers that would be reluctant in participating in federal cost share programs. And then the state funds that we dedicate towards good monitoring and those types of activities would be now dedicated towards implementing the EPA rule and would detract from our ability to do the type of good practices we're doing today. Perfect. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back we're going to talk about what we're doing here in the state and maybe some new legislative action that's been taken. You're watching Kansas Ag Report. We'll see you in just a minute. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine Center. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Farmers Insurance, your best protection against the unexpected. Call Agent Dan Key at 785-408-5459. Grass and grain, online or in the mail. Keeping Kansas farmers informed for over 60 years. Grassandgrain.com. Blue River Traders, the finest selection of Western-style furniture for your home. BlueRiverTraders.com. Thanks for staying with us. We're at the uh, KDA office in Manhattan. We're joined by Susan Mesker, who's the new Assistant Agriculture Secretary. So uh, thanks for staying with us this morning. Thank you. Uh, two pieces of legislation that was passed here in the state of Kansas, very important to water. Absolutely. Well, you may recall that the, for the past 18 months, we've been doing a stakeholder outreach process to develop a long-term vision for the future of water in Kansas. And through that, we ended up with several phase one action items, things that we knew we needed to get done in the next year to secure our future with water. And included in those phase one action items were several pieces of legislation, uh, some of which have already been passed through the legislature and signed by our governor this session. Uh, a really important one is one that allows us to develop water 
water conservation areas. This is a new tool. Uh, we anticipate, it, although it can be used throughout the state, that it'll be widely adopted in western Kansas. And it gives local water right owners, either an individual water right owners or a group of water right owners, to come together and develop their own conservation plan. And with that are afforded flexibilities. Uh, flexibilities that might include being able to move water or apply water in places that their typical water right application would not allow them to do. And the uh, second piece is legislation? So there's a couple of smaller pieces of legislation, though equally important, that came out of the vision. One thing that might be intriguing to hear about is in impairment cases, there is a piece of legislation that now allows the chief engineer to consider augmentation mm -hmm. as a tool for addressing impairments. Right now, this would be applied strictly to the Rattlesnake Creek subbasin in central Kansas, and it allows those local water right owners, if they want to, to consider a process where they could pump from their own water rights into the stream to help meet downstream mm -hmm. senior water rights if the chief engineer approves it. And I know something you were very involved with before you left the water office was the John Redmond project and sediment and, and not only the John Redmond but everywhere across the state. How are we kind of fighting that? You bet. So uh, good timing. We anticipate that this week we will receive uh, our approval from the headquarters office of the Army Corps of Engineers to move forward on that project and be able this year to bring in the dredging equipment and the construction equipment to fully implement that project and begin removing three million cubic yards of sediment and restoring 1,800 acre feet of storage mm -hmm in that reservoir for the future. And that is not only important to this part of Kansas, northeast part of Kansas, but the state as whole. Absolutely. You know, certainly on a local perspective, it makes a big difference for the water supply for Wolf Creek Nuclear Generating Station and the communities downstream.